All right, everyone, we start off today with some counter-propaganda here. It's, again, something you won't hear from the MSM. You're not going to hear it from the legacy media or even a lot of independent content creators because this has been so successfully hidden that even a lot of them, I think, aren't aware of this fact. And that's that Trump's wall actually is being built, despite claims to the contrary. Like, you hear sometimes, well, only three miles of wall have been built. That's so misleading that it should be classed as fully false. It's not even mostly false. It's just bullshit. That represents the amount of new wall built in one sense, which is that it doesn't replace any existing structure. But can we think for a moment about what existing structure means? In most cases along the U.S. border, that means a vehicle barrier. Not a wall, not even a fence, not an embankment, literally just a couple strings of barbed wire with some metal poles. A person can literally step over it, or go under it, <laughs> or go through it with wire cutters. It's not an effective barrier to anything. So if you replace, as Trump has, over 100 miles of that kind of barrier or simple chain link dating to the Bush administration or even before with something that's 30 feet tall, in some cases double layer, that counts as new wall because there wasn't a wall there to begin with. And I know what some people say, well, it's not a wall, it's a fence. If you think that it would be a good idea to build, you know, 20 foot thick medieval style stone fortifications on the southern border, Talk to some engineers or an architect, please, and then get back to me. Cost a lot more, cost 10,000 times more to maintain. You're talking about several active seismic zones in the region. I don't think it would work very well. I think fairly quickly you'd realize why it's a better idea to build the kind of wall that Trump is building. The idea that you can see through it so therefore it's not a wall doesn't make sense. Well, this is a wall. It's also uh, got a lot of windows along it, but it's a wall. It's not, not you know, fenced into this building. It's walled off from the outside world <laughs> by a wall. So no difference there. You've got oh, about 100 miles of barrier completed, with about 150 more now currently underway. And some of that is fully new. That is that it's closing a gap where there's nothing. Some of it's replacing uh, vehicle barriers, older segments of wall that I believe are 20 feet tall instead of 30 in most cases, and then chain link double uh, fencing, uh, none of which are, are up to modern standards trying to stop people. If you Again, if you replace something with something that is totally different, it counts as new. The idea that the vehicle barrier there in many parts of the border is a wall or even a fence is, is asinine. So that's splitting hairs when people say that that's not new wall. And also I would like to posit as, uh, another thing here. I would like to say this. It makes more sense to first replace existing wall anyway, because the reason why there's something there as opposed to absolutely nothing is specifically because those are the zones that need to be protected the most. If you've got a chain link fence that was put up in the 80s there, it was deemed necessary to put the fence there by administrations that were often very pro-globalism, and even they recognized that that was an area that needed to be fenced off. What Trump is doing first and foremost is dealing with the easier issue of that before he... He's got to do that while he's acquiring land to build new border. One of the things that's been obstructing him lately is that people don't want to sell their land near the border where an effective barrier can actually be built. But if there's already a barrier there, it's a hell of a lot easier. Because you don't need to purchase the land. The land is already belonging to the government or it's already got a right of way where there's a wall there or a fence or whatever. And so you simply go in and replace it. I find it funny, because if, if Trump supposedly isn't building any new wall, why is it that I'm seeing uh, hippy-trippy articles from the far left about how it's a water-thirsty wall that's blocking turtle migration or whatever the hell it was, <laughs> I believe, in Southern California. Uh, and by the way, uh, the prototyping in San Diego has gone off without a hitch. Supposedly, this wall is easily cut through with a torch, and you can scale it if you have this ladder and stuff like that. Uh, people expect it to be perfect. Why is it that people are positing that the government can ever create something perfect in the first place? This is meant to be a generally effective barrier against people entering the country illegally. This is not meant to be perfect, because there is no perfect solution. People who thought there was going to be a 50-foot tall wall manned with auto turrets uh, going 20 miles into the ground and there'd be like alligators and and uh, animatronic gargoyles guarding it, that was never going to happen. You wouldn't be able to pay for it. But the kind of wall that Trump is building can be. I would point out another thing. So, uh, one person was trying to be a propagandist and saying, well, if you average it out, it's only like 30 miles of wall a year. Ha ha, Trump has failed. Well, no, it's, uh, it's 100 miles because until, this, until very recently, literally the last like four or five months, Trump couldn't build anything 
All they could do is, is acquire some land voluntarily and allocate some of the money uh, for a small portion of the wall that Congress allocated in southern Texas in one particular zone that really needed it because of a heavy flow of people. The Ninth Circuit kept him from doing buttfuck anything until this last year. And it was halfway through the year before the Ninth Circuit was knocked out of the way by a higher court decision. Skoda said, oh yeah, by the way, you're allowed to have your wall funding. Yes, by the way, the president does have the right to do what the president has always had the right to do, which is take Pentagon uh, money that's been earmarked to nothing and can be used for whatever the hell you want and use it for the wall because it's a defensive sort of apparatus. So Trump has built, so far, 100 miles of wall. He's got 150 miles more currently underway, some of which is totally new and some of which is replacing, again, little more than a, a strip of barbed wire or a chain link fence. It's a big difference between a 10 foot chain link fence and a 30 foot uh, steel wall. There's definitely a big difference when you're talking about a vehicle barrier or, you know, basically fucking picket fence or whatever they've got on the southern border. They've shown videos of it. Some of these remote locations that are in between, you know, cities and towns. There isn't really anything there. A person can literally walk across. The only uh, thing impeding them is the fact that it's desert. The fact that in order to wander through that desert and come out anywhere where ice won't nab them requires, you know, somebody to smuggle them in or it requires a lot of supplies or something like that in a 20-mile march through the steppe. Well, you know, it can be done. It obviously is, considering there are millions of people in the country illegally who walked across the uh, U.S.-Mexico border, including many people that aren't from Mexico at all. So what I would say is this. In addition to that, so first and foremost, the wall is being built. It's simply been slowed down by obstruction. Number two, a lot of it is new wall. If you don't count replacing a four-foot vehicle barrier with a 30-foot wall to be new wall, you're splitting hairs. You're being disingenuous. Number three, much more is planned. Now, it'll probably be a bit behind schedule, but then that comes to number four. What alternative is being suggested by these so-called black-pilled former Trump fans I see all over Twitter, who I suspect in many cases are actually left-wingers who never supported him in the first place and are being propagandists? Their alternative is, hey, we'll vote for Bernie Sanders. Vote for the Democrats. Ha ha, we'll punish Trump. Yes, it makes perfect sense to say that the re I'm, I'm pissed off at Trump for not immediately building his entire wall, and it's not a medieval fortification, and, and he hasn't taxed Mexico yet. I'm pissed off at him. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to vote for a party that stands for literal open borders and, and wants to take what wall is there and tear it down. Several of the candidates have openly proclaimed they would dismantle the border wall entirely, including Beto O'Rourke, who dropped out, but is still a, a name within the Democratic Party. Now, Bernie Sanders has alluded to this, although in the past he was a pretend populist. Elizabeth Warren, among other people, including, I believe, Yang and some others, have said that they would decriminalize crossing the border in its entirety so that you'd come across, and as long as you're willing to give them a fingerprint, they'll let you in the country, no problem. And you can get free health care if you're illegally in the United States, too, under many of their plans. Free health care and education stuff. You can get freebies that U.S. citizens can't get. So, yeah, it, that makes perfect sense. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join the Yang gang because Trump hasn't decided to override the separation of powers, transgress the Constitution that doesn't allow the allocation of money directly by the president. Of course, Congress controls the purse strings, specifically the Democrat-controlled House. Uh, because Trump hasn't chosen to ignore basic civics and con to, uh, completely usurp the U.S. political structure, I'm going to vote for the Democrats. I'm going to vote for the open borders people. It's just like saying, hey, I'm going to vote for the Democrats because Trump killed Soleimani. Yeah, he, Trump kills Soleimani. That's a big problem. I'm going to vote for Bernie Sanders instead, who in 2015 rambled about how he loved Obama's drone program, would gladly use it. Oh, I won't invade. I'll just keep killing people the way Obama does. It's pretty good, he said at the time. Yeah, wonderful. A great solution to a non-existent problem. And it is. It's a non-existent problem. The wall is being built. It's a campaign promise fundamentally fulfilled. It's just behind schedule because the Ninth Circuit and, uh, and uh, Congress decided to stand in the way. And despite that, he still got it done. It's pretty impressive, actually, what Trump has managed to accomplish on the U.S. border. Further... Uh, in closing, I would say some people saying, well, he hasn't deported everyone yet. Well, yeah, it's kind of difficult to deal with the sanctuary cities and states. See, the problem is Trump does not have the unilateral authority. The Tenth Amendment has been construed as blocking him from tackling the issue. He has to go before SCOTUS again. This is the slowing down of government. Now, this is a very good thing. If you've got some despicable tyrant, like a Bush Obama, uh, in office, it slows them down. It helps keep them from doing terrible things. 
When you have someone who has some common sense on an issue, it can be frustrating. But we have to live with that being the case because the alternative is worse. The alternative is making an imperialistic executive authority that would act in a dictatorial fashion. You may say, well, God Emperor Trump would be okay with that power. Okay, maybe you think that. I disagree, but I digress. Um, you wouldn't want to give that power to a, a Bernie Sanders, probably. I doubt you'd want it in the hands of a Joe Biden or an Elizabeth Warren. You'd go back and forth, you know, after four years of, of Dem leadership, if they had that kind of authority, then no Republican would get elected because they would literally just import half of China or something. Oh, yeah, well, we'll win forever. No problems. That's about all. Peace out.